that there was a, a choice when they built the consolidated high school for the county, whether to have um, a, a something very dramatically wonderful like a swimming pool for sports, or would they rather have something for vocational ed, like a radio station? And it was uh, decided by the school board to have a radio station. At the time, they said, okay, we'll have a radio station. Uh, the station actually opened in 74, mm, but um, I guess it took a while to, to get it up, geared up. But it was like, okay, you can have a radio station, but you're going to have to have this thing that nobody knows about. It's called FM. Well, no one, nobody in my acquaintance had an FM receiver. So a lot of people couldn't hear it at first. You had to have a special radio to get receive FM uh, signal. Uh, it's continued to be a strong and wonderful signal. And I've actually heard one statistic that there's only one other high school radio station in the United States that's more powerful than this, which is 17,500 watts, which is just amazing. But um, it has served as vocational education and, and entertainment for the community ever since. I think maybe in the early 90s, uh, other, there were other entities who would like to have some of this bandwidth. Uh, and it was seemed like there was an underutilization of this giant thing sitting here. Because as soon as school was out, it was over. As soon as the weekend was here, it was over. But uh, they started to collaborate, and the big collaboration they came up with was University of Pennsylvania's WXPN. So we hit a toggle switch, and XPN broadcast over our facilities. And that satisfied people who felt that that would be a really good use of this bandwidth. So that uh, collaboration has continued. When they began having the adult volunteers coming in after school and in the evenings, and which was my gig for 20 years. It was, it's just delightful because what I found out that people tune into radio, they usually want a specific format. And if it doesn't follow their format, they won't listen. They only, a lot of people only want the, the music they like. But with this unusual situation, it was more like a college radio station where it was the DJ's choice. If it was country, if it was uh, uh, a lot of doo-wop, of course, Dixieland jazz, which is the round mound of sound, each person had their own particular uh, music that they liked to play, and you could tune in and hear passionate uh, descriptions of each of these songs that were coming up. My particular uh, choice was jazz and blues, and then I also had a half hour of eclectic. Uh, I was just talking to one of the students here. He said, well, anything goes. I said, that should have been the name of my show. The high school, uh, the station manager, Chris Singleton, is very, very generous of, about letting the community use it. For instance, we do have a project coming up, which is from the Charles Sumner Post Grand Army of the Republic. Uh, we are just starting to create some five-minute radio spots with Robert Earl Price as the narrator, and it's going to be called Black Cultural Almanac, a la kind of the poet's almanac. And they have offered uh, the production studios here for us to create these pieces. Then they will play them here, and we'll play them on other local radio stations. And I think it's a little underappreciated here in Kent County, and I would love to see people, more people tune in to the fact that it's here.